Hey, what's going on? Um, I wanted to make you a uh, midterm review video solution guide. All right. I hope this helps. Good luck on your midterm and let's get started. All right. So for this first problem here, uh, we need to simplify by removing all um, possible factors from the radical. All right. So um let's see here first this is a cube root so what i like to do is break this cube root apart all right into perfect cubes like for example 54 is 27 uh times the cube root of two and because 27 is a perfect cube and then you have x to the fifth i want to break that apart into x cubed i'm sorry q root of x cubed and the q root of x squared all right so now factor this well when you simplify that excuse me the cube root of 27 is 3 and the cube root of x cubed is x all right now these other two uh radicals right here are not cube not perfect cubes so they'll stay underneath the radical like so Uh, 2x squared. So that's our answer right there. Okay. Alright, for this next problem right here. Um, Alright, cool. We gotta break this apart, but we have a fourth here. So first of all, you see this right here? The fourth root of this monomial to the fourth power. Well, they undo each other. So I'm just left with that. Okay. Let's simplify it. Uh, next problem. 35. Alright. Again, we have the Q root of 144 with X to the 9, the Y to the negative 4, Z to the 5th. Alright. We need to do some work on that. For this one, uh, I think I'm going to start by simplifying this radical. So I need to find a perfect cube for 144. Alright, so that is going to be the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 18. 8 times 18 is 144. Times the cube root of x to the ninth. Um, times the Q root of Y to the negative 4 times the Q root of Z to the 5th. So, alright, here we go. Um, the Q root of 8 is 2. Alright, the Q root of 18 stays right here. If you remember, that's, well, right here, that's X to the 1 third. For x to the ninth, for x to the one third. All right, and so nine times one third is three. So this is x cubed. All right, or if you looked at it like x to the nine thirds, right there, you'll see nine divided by three is three. So this one, see that negative exponent? I don't want a negative exponent, so I'm going to move that to the bottom. All right, so I have the cube root of one over y to the fourth. I'm going to come back to that. And this one, I'm going to break apart. z cubed, z squared. Alright. Actually, you know what? I'm going to break this apart too. Let's go ahead and break that apart. Whoa, what did mean for that to happen? Let's break that apart so you'll have z cubed and, and let me see y cubed and y. Like that. Now, uh, let's keep reducing these right here. If you look, um, this one, all right, the cube root of y cube is, right, and notice that's in the bottom, so it stays in the bottom. <laughs> Over here, um, 18, all right, the cube root of z cube is z. I'm sorry, z. That comes out, and you have z squared still underneath the radical. 
But remember, there's a denominator right here that came out. So it's just Y left underneath this radical. So anyway, final answer. You have 2X um, Q Z over Y times the Q root of 18 Z squared over Y. So that's the final answer right there. Simplify that. All right, that's it for those. Uh, for this next example, we have two completely fat degrees polynomial. All right, so this one, we have the difference of two squares. So we have nine uh, minus, or here, this is nine times nine. This is, and negative y squared times y squared. So we end up with nine minus y squared, and we end up with nine plus y squared. But we're not done because this is two still the difference of two squares. So this right here would be uh, three minus y and three plus y times nine plus y squared. So there we go. Uh, I'll do 28 real quick. This one, um, we're going to um, factor by grouping. Let's try that. So over here, uh, I'm going to factor out of x squared. So I'm left with x minus 1. And then right here, I'm going to factor out a... Um, negative one right so I'm left with um x minus one like that to a negative one because then that becomes a positive that becomes a negative so anyway we end up with here's my first fa well now we factor again all right visualize this I gotta factor out the common binomial which is x minus one so i take that out so now i'm left with just x squared right here and i'm left with just negative one right here because see look x minus one times x squared is x squared times x minus one and x minus one times negative one is negative one times x minus one and so now this right here is a difference of two squares so i end up with x minus one and this will be x plus one x minus one so you can write it like that, or you can put, see how it's two X minus ones? Right there. So either way works. Um, let's look at this one. Difference of two squares again. This is exactly like um, the problem to the left right here. So you have X squared uh, plus four and x squared minus four but you're not done right here this is going to be x plus two and x minus two uh grouping again i'm going to factor out a x squared again so i'm left with two x minus three and over here factor out a two factor out a positive two and i'm left with two x minus three two that's four x that's negative six yep so now i factor out two x minus three and i'm left with x squared plus two so that doesn't factor anymore so that's what we got right there um last two of this section oh uh, can i go grouping here yeah i can go grouping again here i'm going to factor out a x squared again and i have x minus four and over here i'm going to factor out a negative one so i have x minus four See, negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. 
So now I factor out of x minus 4 from both sides. I'm left with x squared minus 1, which that's the difference of two squares. So you have x minus 4, and then you end up with x plus 1, x minus 1. So that's our final solution right there. And one more time, factor by grouping. Factor out a x squared and left with x minus five. And factor out a negative five. And I'm left with positive x minus five. See, because negative five times x is negative five x. And negative five times negative five is positive twenty-five. Anyway, factor out of x minus 5, and I'm left with x squared minus 5. So, there we go right there. Alright, uh, right here. Man, where does this line come from? Let's delete that. Uh, find all the zeros of the polynomial. Um... Well, one, you could factor it. Yeah, I'm just going to factor it. Or you can use synthetic division. Um, I'm going to try to factor by grouping. Uh, doesn't look like it's going to work, though. Yeah, it'll work. Take out x squared. I'm left with x minus 1. Right? x cubed negative x squared. Factor out negative 4. Excuse me. And I'm left with positive x, that's negative 4, and minus 1, because that's positive 4. And anyway, I'm left with x squared minus 4 uh, times x minus 1, because you find out x minus 1. Do the same thing you did to other problems. But this is the difference of two squares right here. So that's uh, x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 1. And then you set all this equal to zero because you want to find all the, the uh, zeros. So I set each one, each term that I got, x plus two equal to zero, you get x equals negative two. Uh, x minus two equal to zero, add two over to the other side, x equals two, and then x minus one equals zero. Add one over, you get x equals one. So those are all the zeros of that polynomial. Right here, uh, yeah, grouping over again, fact that I x squared, I have 2x plus 1, right, yeah, and then factor out a 3, and I'm left with 2x plus 1. So now I factor out 2x plus 1, and x squared plus 3. And then you set each factor equal to zero like we just did. Uh, subtract one, divide by two, x equals negative one half, and then x squared plus three equals zero, subtract three. Um, square root both sides. Alright, um, the negative 1 becomes i, so x equals plus or minus 3i. Alright, so those are my two zeros, or three zeros actually. And you know it's three zeros because the degree is three. Alright, moving on, moving on. This looked like a domain problem. Uh, find the, the interval on the given expression is defined. Yes, a radical. Take the radical. You're going to set the the factors underneath the radical greater than or equal to zero. Alright. And the reason you do that is because the smallest possible square root you can have is zero. So there are no perfect squares less than zero. So now add four over. And then square root of both sides. You get x is greater than or equal to plus or minus two. So those are our two answers right there. 
score. Let's just press and let's define. All right, for this one, again, take, take the binomial underneath the radical, set it greater than, oops, greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna start here by adding, um, adding x squared. So four is greater than or equal to x squared. Now I square root both sides um, and I get two is greater than or equal to, oh, I'm sorry, plus or minus two is greater than or equal to x. All right, so there we go. Right here, x is greater than, but right here, x is less than. All right, uh, perform the indicated operation. All right, so we need common denominators. All right, we need common denominators in short. So first I need to factor this out. All right, so I end up with x all over uh, x. I see two factors that multiply to give me negative two. Uh, you have one and negative two, and you have two and negative one. But it also has to add to give me one. So that's one if I add it. So uh, x plus 2, x minus 1. So now we know what factor we need to multiply by to get common denominators, which is going to be x minus 1. So now we, we simplify. So x minus 1 times this is x minus 1 all over x plus 2 x minus 1 now we distribute the negative I know you think oh it kills it out no you can't you just put it in here so now distribute the negative so that gives us uh, x minus x plus 1 all over x plus 2 x minus 1 and then right there x minus x is 0 so I'm left with 1 all over uh, x plus 2, x minus 1. All right. You can put that, or you can put 1 over. Just distribute that back out, which is that x squared plus x minus 2. Doesn't matter. Same answer, though, okay? Same answer. Um, that's 6. Oops, next page. All right, this one says use a graphing utility uh, to graph the function and determine the domain and range of the function. All right, um, all right, cool, 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 cool. So I'll use a graphing utility then. So I got to calculate. Give me one second. All right, one second. So uh, let's graph this. So I have x divided by uh, the square root of x minus 4. I like that. So, we graph it. Oh, my graph is off. I gotta fix it. Let's fix it. With graph. Uh, negative 10. Alright, there's my graph right there. Alright, so we gotta look at the domain. So, a couple things I wanna point out is first, there's an asymptote right here. All right, at uh, one, two, three, four. There's an asymptote right there at four. I didn't even hit it, but you got the idea. So this graph goes from four to the right. All right. Um. So we're gonna say the domain is four to the positive infinity. For the range, though. The thing I want you to notice is this graph comes down, but because it's a uh, radical, it'll never cross that axis right there. All right, it'll never cross that axis. So, here, let me extend it out for you so you can see. Even if I extended it, you know, to a very, very, very large number. Let's move that X scale up, X max, to like uh, 10,000. This is gonna be a terrible graph, but look. Oh, it doesn't even show it. That's crazy. 
All right, but it continues infinitely for the domain. It'll never cross that right there for the range. So when we define it, we're gonna say domain. Um, it's going to be four to positive infinity. And the range is going to be zero to positive infinity. Because remember that graph, all right, if I had a rough sketch, it comes down, but it never crosses, never crosses that the Y axis and it goes up infinitely. All right. All right, uh, in exercise 21 through 24, evaluate the function at a specified value of the dependent variable, simplify the result. All right, so this right here is just plug and chug. All right, the first one is going to be for a f of zero. So um, f of zero equals three times zero minus two. So that's zero minus two equals negative two. All right, for this one, uh, f of x minus one equals three times x minus one minus two. So distribute three x minus three minus two gives us 3x uh, minus 5. For f of x minus 1 equals 3x minus 5. And then for this one, hey, look at that. Delta x. <laughs> f of x plus uh, delta x equals 3 times x plus delta x minus 2. Which gives us 3x plus 3 delta x minus 2 all right which doesn't simplify so I'm going to flip the x plus right there doesn't simplify all right uh right here okay let me minimize this a little bit all right number nine uh we need to use the graphs to find a limit if it exists so for this first one that's x approaches zero now notice right here this doesn't have a direction on it it doesn't say from the left or the right all right it's very specific all right it approaches zero so as x approaches zero all right from the left side from this side and this side what is the one y value that we see all right and we're going to say one all right this limit as it approaches zero x is zero it approaches one all right got it it approaches one for when x approaches negative 1 from this side all right, and this side. And the cool thing about limits, guys, is it just has to approach it. All right, what does it approach from both sides? So as it comes from this side and this side, it approaches 3. That one was really simple. Over here, for this one, it says, uh, what is the limit as x approaches 1? So again, from the left side and from the right side, what does it approach? As it approaches, it approaches negative two from both sides. All right, again, as x approaches three from both sides. All right, what is that y value or the solution? Zero. Uh, for 11, all right, as it approaches zero, and again, notice this is not a filled in circle, so it means not equal to, but it's okay. It just needs to approach the value. All right, so what is it approaching? One again. All right, and as it approaches negative one from both sides, because it doesn't indicate which direction to come from, all right, it approaches three. All right, now 12. As it approaches negative two from both sides, it approaches negative five. And as it approaches zero, from both sides, it approaches negative three. All right. All right, now these are directions, all right? This is used to graph to find the limit if it exists. So this one means from the right, this one means from the left, and this one means both. So as X approaches, or as C, all right, as X approaches C, well C in this case is three. So as X approaches three from the right side, so here's the right side, so I come from the right. What do I approach? I approach one. All right, so um, C from the right equals one. All right, C from the left 
as I approach three from the left. That's one. All right. And as I approach from both sides, as you can see, it's the same thing. All right. That's still one as well. All right. So that one's fairly easy. All right. 18. As I approach, C is negative two. So as I approach from the right, I approach negative two. As I approach from the left, I approach negative two. And as I approach from both sides, I still approach negative two. 19. All right, uh, C is three. So as I approach from the right side, all right, I'm at zero. That's three zero. That tells me that point I'm at zero. As I approach from the left side, I'm still at zero. And as I approach from both sides, from this way and this way, I still approach zero. Now, why am I not using this point right here? Because that point is isolated. That's an isolated point. I'm not approaching that point at all. That point is already solidified. Um, this one, all right, C is negative two. So as I approach from the right side, I approach two. And again, guys, I know there's an open circle, so as a whole, I don't have to touch it. I just have to approach it. As I approach from the left side, all right, I approach two. And as I approach from both sides, as you can see, it's still two. That's a point on the graph. I'm not approaching that point. I can't even get to that point, all right? All right, C is three. So now this one's a little different. As I approach from the right side, notice this graph has no right side, all right? So as I go to three from the right side, what am I approaching? positive three. Look, this is the right side. That's the right side. All right, so as I come from the right, I approach three. Um, as I approach from the left side, notice there's, there's no right side here. There's no right side. See, there's no left side here, but there's a right side here. I mean, a left side here, right? Left side, excuse me, as I approach from the left side, I don't know why I put minus one there. As I approach from the left side, there's no left side here, so I don't look up here. I look here. As I approach from the left side, what do I approach? What's the Y value? Negative three. So see the difference here? This is from the right. This is from the left. Now, from both sides, as I approach both sides, understand, I can't have two different answers. All right, there's one X value three. <coughs> excuse me. Cannot have two different answers, all right? That it wouldn't make it one to one. So this limit does not exist all right, because that's a jump. That's a gap right there, excuse me. All right, over here, 22, as I approach from the right side, all right? This wouldn't be the right side. This is coming from the left to get to that point. So as I come from the right side, I approach zero. As I come from the left, I approach two. But as I approach from both sides, from this way and this way, all right, notice I have two different Y values, which that can't be, so does not exist. All right. Now, let's keep it going. All right, um, let's see, describe the interval in which the function is continuous, explain the function is, explain why the function is continuous on the intervals, if the function has a discontinuity, describe the condition of continuity that are not satisfied, also identify discontinuity as removable or non-removable. This is important, guys, all right, on your midterm, you will see these terms, and you will need to know what they mean as it pertains to each question. All right, so first of all, well, actually, I'm going to call this part one. Um, I don't like the video going over 30 minutes. So this will be part one, and I'm going to make a part two. So uh, see you at part two. Catch you later.